So we hear about strains, new variants. It's unclear whether some of these vaccines are efficient against them. What do we know? Well, we know that um, there are now multiple lineages of SARS coronavirus that we're calling variants. Uh, there's the UK variant, which is what most people have heard about. We now hear variants from South Africa, Brazil, Japan, and various other places. Um, most of the time, these virus lineages come to our attention because they have changes in the surface protein that either will make that protein more efficient at infecting cells, or in some cases, they're at parts of the protein that we know that antibodies that protect us from infection uh, can bind to that part. And so what we're really now focusing on is understanding how frequently these viruses are occurring in the population and how much of an effect does these one or two uh, changes in the protein have on the vaccine-induced responses? So far, the, the data looks good. The vaccine seems to re recognize all of these variants as they come up, but this is an ongoing uh, research question that uh, many, many laboratories around the world are keeping track of. Um, Andrew Petkosh, when you look at some of the logistical you know, concerns about distributing the vaccine, uh, how much progress has the U.S. done over the last two weeks? Well, it's important to note that, you know, the high priority populations in the U.S., those elderly living in residence uh, uh, facilities, as well as healthcare workers, you know, those are difficult populations to immunize. Um, I just actually got my second uh, shot of my vaccine yesterday. And, you know, there was a staff of 12 to 20 healthcare workers that were running the vaccination. Uh, that's a lot of people to pull away from a hospital that is really pushing its limits in terms of caring for COVID-19 patients. So the rollout initially was slow. Uh, I'm very hopeful that now that vaccine production seems to be continuously increasing, that as we move into the general population, there'll be much more efficient and um, high throughput ways of getting these vaccines into people's arms because a vaccine in a freezer doesn't do anything. It needs to get into people's arms. And I would add, I think it needs to get into the people's arms at the schedule that has been approved by the FDA here in the U.S. for maximum benefit. Andrew, when you look at some of, of you know, overall the concerns of the nice five to six months, how important is it that we have new vaccines, such as the J&J, &J, which is one shot that would come on the market? Is that, does that help, or is then there just too much more logistics coming? Does it help with the doses? Yeah. It, any vaccine will help with the doses because even though we're increasing the amount of vaccinations that we're doing each week, we still need to increase that level uh, by a great degree in order to obtain a good number of people who are vaccinated by the end of the summer. I think a goal that I've always thought about is the end of the summer because what we would like to have is a large percentage of the population immunized before we enter the fall season. We all saw how horrific the fall season was and now into the winter in terms of COVID-19 cases as people moved inside into, into places where there's more contact between them. What we want to do with the vaccine program is make sure that by the end of the summer, we have a high percentage of people who are vaccinated. New vaccines um, are gonna allow us to move into different populations, different storage conditions, uh, different numbers of doses. All those things can be handled by our healthcare information systems. Um, those vaccines will help us broaden the scope and get to all segments of the population uh, so that we can be really comprehensive in terms of who's getting immunized against COVID-19. Um, Andrew, when you look at some of the challenges going forward and what we heard from Joe Biden in terms of his relief plan, we don't know whether it will be passed you know, through Congress, but on face value, is it enough to really try and, and stem this pandemic? Uh, the, from what I've seen of the plan, it will help in terms of the what I would call medium to long term solutions here. Uh, we all have to emphasize um, the fact that the short term solution is what we've been talking about for many months now. Mask wearing, social distancing, uh, avoiding crowds. Those are the things that are going to help us over the next few weeks turn the corner on the pandemic and get these case numbers and hospitalization numbers down. You know, the Biden plan 
is a good medium to long term solution, but we have to think about the problem in those two ways. There are immediate things that we have to do to reduce the number of cases that we're seeing here in the U.S. and in many other countries. But then there's the medium to long term problem of getting the vaccine into people, making sure the vaccine is effective and monitoring for these new variants to make sure that the virus is still sensitive to the vaccine's um, immune response.